started, we have some information about them to share with you, to give you a little characterization of these guys. So uh, Kotzloff is 17, left-handed. You can see that it always makes it for an interesting match where one is left-handed, one's right-handed. He was 58th recently in Doha, and he's ranked, as a junior, he's ranked 170th. He has no other notable results until today. And what you want to look for in him is, uh, apparently, it has been noted that he has canny footwork, and he's particularly dangerous when he's going backwards. Uncanny footwork. It's one of those words that can go both ways. Yeah, he's there. No, but I mean, I have just been very impressed with his footwork. And uh, the Korean. Dong Young Choi. She's 18. And I am told here to pronounce his name properly. It would be Choi Don Yoon. Now, you know, when we when we list things in the FIA, we use we, we only do it one way. And the Koreans have their names in you know in reverse that way. Hungarians. Uh-huh. Hungarians as well. Right. Anyway, so he's 18, and he has no ranking. He's an unknown athlete, and he's a, but um, he's been noted that he has a typical sort of uh, Korean fencer athletic style with an energetic approach, and uh, that he has uh, um, that he can present himself as quite the handful on the piece. Um, so uh, it's going to be a high energy match and um, be an interesting contrast of styles with an attacking Korean and a and a Russian with uh, sort of precise footwork. And um, you know, let's see what it's going to look like. Uh, you know, um, you might be inclined to favor the Korean, but Kozlov is a smart fencer and could do very, very well here today. So we're expecting a good, great, close match here. It's, I don't think it's going to be a blow up on any means, and it's going to be a, an interesting um, compare and contrast of styles here uh, with a couple of fencers who aren't very well known in, in the junior circuits. And that's what this whole kind of year off pandemic has done. It's brought, you know, it's brought some, uh, some new people out of the woodwork and it's uh, put the pressure on some people that sort of thought perhaps before that they had a shoe in. And I do want to uh, also mention that uh, uh, our one of our other FIE commentators who you know very well from from very many events, uh, Karen Bashir, um, shared a lot of this information with us and sent us some notes, which was helpful. Uh, be, uh, to Don and me here at this at this event, so we very much appreciate him uh, getting that information over to us. So, a shout out to Karim for that. We really appreciate Karim. As I said earlier, Karim does the does the work, does the research, always has uh, useful information. I think what's most interesting about this bout is that. Uh, neither one of these young men have uh, any significant results. But also, I think right. we have to put that in context of the fact that we didn't have a season this year. Right. So these guys have well, been you know, at home training. Well, and this is kind of part of the fun of juniors, too, is, you know, because even if we'd had a season off in the seniors, you would still be seeing people you know pretty well, right? With the juniors, you get this surprise element of people that you might not have seen. Well, you know, I mean, we have a fairly uh, established cadets, yes, but juniors, you have a junior World Cup, you and do. and and the major, I mean, all of these uh, major countries compete in the junior World Cups. I mean, that's how you know. I mean, we actually give a uh, World Cup uh, medal from the FIE for the winner of that. So, what happens is you actually do get to see them, but a lot of them don't show up until the year that they are juniors or. Yeah. They mature, right? Because at this age, you know, you have the growth cycles, you have the development cycles, you have the point where things just click, right? You see them working on uh, Choi Dong Yoon, uh, and it looks like when they came together, he uh, he hit his uh, arm. He's they they he's in the middle of a medical medical timeout, and I, I'm guessing it. Mm, it looks like it's a little bit more than just hitting the funny bone. He, yeah. I'm looking at his face, and he's grimacing um, as they're working on it. 
we have one of our FIE uh, mission. Uh, yeah, he hit it pretty hard, I think. Yeah, uh, when there's guards jammed. And so that's a lot of that's because you got a righty against a lefty. But we're, we're not technically in a medical break. Well, yeah, we're on a five minute medical break, I think, right? Yeah, so, the clock's yeah. running. Right. Uh, I was going <coughs> to mention. I was going to mention um, and what were sorry. you going to mention? Sorry, I was going to mention the mention? other night when uh, the American uh, girl took the gold medal in Sabre. Uh, Skarbonikovic. Oh, Skarbonikovic. Skarbonikovic. Mm -hmm. uh, what I didn't know about her, which is interesting, is that she won that title on the 20th anniversary of Mario Zagunas winning the same title of World Cadet Sabre Champion. Oh, well, that's a auspicious. And I was told that after that, of course, I wasn't doing the commentary that night, but I was writing the press release, and, and I wish I'd known that, but it, it, it was an interesting fact and kind of a point of trivia that I thought I would mention to you. And Serge, uh, and they train together. Well, Marielle. And yeah, her uh, father is uh, assistant coach at uh, right that club. Yep. OFA, Oregon Fencing Alliance, which has produced a lot of great fencers, right, including Marielle and Becca Ward, uh, who is I think the only person I know that won a cadet junior and senior world championship and team. And all team, the same year, all the same season, medals. all the same season. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty impressive. But I'm sorry, I interrupted you. You were going to say something. Well, else. I just think you know. I mean, we don't do this often, so it's uh, important also for people to know that you know your uh, um, you know role as the FIE uh, press officer, right? officer, and all of those great recaps that come out after uh, World Cup and Grand Prix and World Championships are written by none other than Mr. Serge Timberchev. Well, thank you. We're all a team. We all kind of work together. We all try to produce these things together. It's, uh, it's, uh, I've been with the FI for almost 20 years now, so it's, we're a family. We're yeah. a big fencing family. It's a team effort. But thank you. No, you're very welcome. So back on the strip, two to one. See if Mr. Choi's uh, arm is, it looks like it's moving pretty well to me now. Yeah, I, whatever they did helped him. So he's, well, he's, he's able to make another attack and come over the bat. As the referee tells him to both get behind the line. Troy on you up three to one, uh, but still very early. Well, we've seen how dominant Kozlov was in his last bout. Right. Yes, he came out strong and stayed that way. He's got extremely good balance. And I just love the precision steps. If you look at his footwork, it's just so tight. Wow. Fast. Troy is explosive. That's, that's the thing. I mean, when he goes, he just nice explodes. Touch. All of a sudden, he's a nice pair of repos. Yeah. He was ready for that explosion. You say it's Kelly Collar refereeing? Yes, she is. She's made her way up as an FIA referee over the years. Well, yep, she's put in the work. Oh, and she'll be going to Tokyo for it. Selected as one of the foil referees for the games. Ooh, went deep, couldn't get it on target.
Both of them are so confident on their, on their feet. Yeah. And the control of distance. Right. It's really a ple pleasure to watch. Those compound attacks like that with the foot, the footwork is so excellent on the Koreans' part where it's just a, you get a short, medium, and long mm -hmm. lunge. You get a short step, a medium step, and then a long lunge that's just so well-timed and so powerful. And Kozlov just controlled the distance so well that as it's coming, he can adjust. Right. Koreans having a hard time putting the point on there. Well, Kozlov uh, is spending some of his time um, Whoa, nice. fencing with his, his, his point um, out of line. And, and then he brings it in with precision as he's attacking. And it's hard to gauge where it is to try and parry it that way. Yeah. He doesn't bring it in line until he's in the distance. Right. And so, so you, you can't tell where he's going to come from that way. At well, that time, he just said <laughs> he didn't come with his point, and that's why he <laughs> paid. Yeah. That's why he paid. He almost bent his foil in half. Well, he caught him. I mean, Costal yeah. was coming full speed. Right. It's not as though it's not as though Choi moved. He just said, yeah. "Okay, stop." And you know, uh, just for people who uh, aren't familiar with it, these blades are made of what's called miraging steel, mm -hmm. and they actually take the molecules of the the steel and align them so that if they were to break, they break evenly, and they're safer that way, so that they they don't have a jagged edge. Um, which makes it much easier. Yeah, that needle edge is what has caused uh, a lot of damage. Oh, just ducked and rolled on that one. Drop his target, drop his weapon. Once again, advantage of being a lefty. Oh, nice explosion. Oh. Kozlov has really turned the energy around. Choi has now got to regain the momentum that he had. Right. Kozlov has felt him out. Yep. Kozlov's got the distance, which is which was what we saw Choi do in the last bout. Looks like Choi is gasping for air right now, too. Well, I which is knowing how hard the Koreans train. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. I don't think he's, he's not wearing a mask either. So, I mean, he's wearing his fencing mask, but. Oh yeah. Guys are still in. Yeah, he's, no, he, he's. The Russian is strong. He's, you know, he's. Now, if I was the Korean, I would, I would try to like drag this out for 11, nine seconds. Whoa, well. I guess he didn't need to drag it out. Let me just get a touch as we're going down to the clock. So he's been able to pick him up on a counter thrust. He can keep the distance close. So again, we have kind of a high scoring uh, early bout with nine, the score being nine six with uh, the Russian against the Korean. We're into our first break. So we still have effectively six minutes of fencing available to these two boys who have uh, gone pretty quickly through this. Yeah, um, like I said, we have six minutes, and you know, if you see if you, how much of this next period that we'll see actually burn was going to be surprising if it's more than a minute. But I've been surprised before. Now, once again. You know, it's really going to be a question of how uh, much advice that the two coaches are able to provide to be able to, to say. How they're going to uh, change. Yeah. 
All right, coming up on the second period now. Yeah, Aslov is do doing a lot of second attention, suckering him in, trying to make things happen. I mean, I think the biggest problem with uh, that Choi is having is he doesn't know what Aslov is doing. Of course, that time it was one of those where I don't care what you're doing, I'm just going to do what I'm doing. Oh, he broke his weapon. As we were talking about a few just a few minutes ago. Yeah. Of course, he also is challenging the call. The referee's coming back to. Point goes to the Korean, 7-9. Nice. He does that a lot. They're holding the distance so far. What Kozlov was able to do before is make that counterattack without uh, Choi being able to put any light on it. Again, nice yeah. clean pair of repos. Effective little close out there. He is so efficient with his movement. Yeah. And you know, he, the Korean looks more um, clean, just looks more sort of controlled. And, and the Russians' movements are, are a little more, they're, they're, they're a little wilder in a way, almost, you know? Uh, but, I mean, you don't see that? I, no. That's I what I'm seeing. I, I, it, just, it just looks more, I'm not saying it's more effective, less effective. What I'm saying is it's, it's a more sort of diverse movement that he has. Well, he's mixing it up. But I think yeah. for me, it's, uh, it's, a, it's actually in many ways classic, uh, classic Russian precision footwork where they control the distance completely and then able to change, change direction. That's what's been really, really effective. He can, he's changing direction so well. And both of them are controlling the distance nicely, but when Kozlov changed, just then, he got that touch because if you watch, you see he thinks he's coming in and then he's coming back out. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know, I, I uh, it's, it's interesting how these two are approaching the same problem. Oh, there was an interesting attack. Yeah, that was a... Uh, I don't know about that raised foot thing. Oh, that's classic Korean. They do it in Sabre like all the time. It's like a... It's like you, you're, you're bouncing in place, so you're, like a, you're not covering distance, and you're still moving. And then all of a sudden you explode. This is what Kozlov really did. Dangerous. Did you notice that the um, Korean did not have a coach at the break? He did. He did? Oh, I, I didn't see him. Yeah, he was on the floor. Oh. Yeah, you couldn't see. He was down on the floor talking to him because the Korean sat on the side of the strip. Oh, I see. Good match. Again, that close out, doing the lefty close out, just taking the line, right. taking the target away. If he's, he, 
I don't know when Troy is going to realize that going to that line is not a good idea. He can go to the line over the back, but not the low line. Well, it's, I think with the Russian, it's a little hard for the Korean to gauge the distance, you know, and especially the way he's moving. Well, it's hard to judge the distance because he's constantly changing the distance. Right. This goes in, it'll go out, and it'll slow. Yeah. Pressing a weapon check. Nothing wrong? No, I said it didn't go off. <laughs> yeah, but that's not the weapons problem. No, <laughs> he'd like it to be. And again, and again. A single light. He's, he's hitting and then he's just spinning. I mean, it's hard to hit a moving target that's, you know, you can't put the point on. Right. See when they when they start, he immediately drops his weapon mm -hmm. out of out of line, out of distance, you know, and, and that's what's very, you know, uh, hard to gauge for people. That actually is how uh, say again. I don't know why he keeps going to that back line. The only way he's going to ever get there is over the top, but right. Well, because you your natural inclination is you want to control the weapon. The, uh, your opponent's weapon, and and if you go out of line for it, then you're going to be leaving yourself wide open. It's going in and out, in and out of distance. Very close here, 14-9 for the Russian. Kotsilov close to victory, and there it is. There it is. A new world champion, wow. new junior world Beautiful men's sensor. individual foil champion, Zakhar Kotslov of Russia. And that concludes the two gold medal matches we have here at the 2021 Cairo Junior and Cadet Fencing World Championships. That was very pretty. I want to thank Donald Anthony for being with us here this evening. It's my pleasure and my honor. It's really a lot of fun to be back uh, commentating, and thanks for inviting me. Thank you to the support we've gotten this evening from Karen Bashir as well as David King. And just a closing line. A little more support from Mr. Bashir. It's pretty. It was just a, really a brilliant performance by Kotzloff, and you know he took the control of the fight and uh, controlled his distance. You know, managed uh, to do some um, great creative fencing with the uh, out of pretty. distance movement and the footwork and just the power and mixing it up with the aggression as well as the defensiveness and you know he just he did a great job so